Hi folks, Paul here. I thought I might just show you my design process for when I'm doing all these little 3D printed bits and pieces. Starting with the um, bus bar holder thing for these pouch cells. So my initial idea was I'd have 10 cells in parallel and I designed this piece here um, which did the job reasonably well, but then um, I just added some fillet around the corners and some nice rounded edges to make it even nicer. And then I came up with the idea of having something in a um, that slotted on, and um, this part broke off, so I needed to beef that up. So I added some more plastic in these corners to make that a bit stronger. And um, what did I do? Can't remember what the difference between that and that is. Um, well, actually, that one came first, and then I added the plastic. And then I had the brilliant idea of making a shroud that went all the way around the top of the battery. Um, like like this one um, and then I realized I wanted to go to 12 12 cells in parallel rather than um, 10 so I had to make it wider um, and then uh, this one is ever so slightly narrower so I'm refining the design even further um, and I also came up with a brilliant idea of putting the voltmeter and switch in the middle so that each of these groups will have a, um, at least a voltmeter to monitor its, its um, voltage. And um, I added these extra bits of plastic on the edges to keep it nice and tidy. It's printed in white so that it's easy to see the fuses. Um, I added, I'm not sure how well you can see this, a nice little plus and a minus symbol. Um, and so that one there, when I've got my heat shrink, I'll heat shrink all the way up here and over the edge so that this will be one nice solid group of cells, um, a 12 pack. So, um, that was the various iterations that went into that. Let's go over to the computer and I'll show you the software that I used to do all this design work in. So here we are at Tinkerpad.com, which is the free browser-based 3D design tool that I use. Uh, I'll just sign in. You need it an Autodesk account. So it's owned by the same people who own AutoCAD. Um, but it's a free account um, and it all runs, just runs in the, in the browser. So when you log on, you get your, um, your own page with all your designs. Um, as you can see, these are the number of pages that I've got. So I've been using this for just over three years now and have made quite a lot of stuff in this tool. You can have, your, your designs can either be private or public and if they're public then they end up in the gallery. So um, for example this thing here, the chess set, was one that I grabbed, somebody else designed and made it public and I'm going to slightly enlarge it and then print it for my son. Let's play with the bus bar tray thingy that I was showing you just before to give you a sense of how easy this is. You start with some basic simple shapes, you throw them on the work plane, you stretch them and duplicate them to whatever you want, you join them into groups and you take it from there. So for example, if I grab this block, I'll zoom in on it, uh, and let's go stretch it to 30 millimeters 
and Y, let's go uh, make it 60, and then if we drop this down to one millimeter, uh, at the moment it's in millimeters, you can change it to inches if you're that way inclined, then we can control D to duplicate, uh, turn that that way, raise it up or, and then drop it there, scroll it over there, if we grab both of those and align them, ching, now this is exactly in the center, if we turn around and drop that down to 10, that's about right, then if I deselect and grab this, duplicate that, throw that over there, turn that around there, and then I'll grab this, group that, make it a nice, or maybe not nice, make that a different color, so I can just see what I'm working with, then zoom into here, shrink that down there. Um, at the moment I've got the grid set to one millimeter chunks, so it's kind of easy to to um, get things lining up properly. Then if I duplicate that and throw that over there, and just double check that, I'll make sure that's aligned properly, and yes it is. So I can grab that and that, I think I've got both of those, and group those, oh, did I? Ah, now, group those, group those together, and hey presto. What I've done now is basically replicate the very first um, design step that I did back um, when I was starting out, and I'll get rid of that because I'll, I'll show you this one. Um, so that took me, what, two or three minutes. Uh, it's dead easy, dead simple. Then once I have this, I think I actually moved on and made these nice rounded corners. And the way I did that, if I ungroup it, you'll see I had these little fillet shaped bits that I changed to be holes and any shape can be either a solid object or a hole so you can build up groups of objects and then make the group a hole of weird shape um, but in this case I just got these together and um, when you then go ahead and group that it chops off whatever the holes were. Um, so a hole doesn't have to be yet round, it can be any shape. Uh, and then I added fillets and so on. Then I printed that out and fondled it a bit to, and thought about how the connector was going to work. And after doing all that, I, I settled on having the, um, the bullet connector be up and down like this. So then I went back to Tinkercad and drew this kind of, made this cradle shape. Once again, that is built from bits and pieces that have been thrown together. So that is um, like one of those pieces there, chopped down. Um, this is an arch that's made, been made nice and narrow. This is the fillet stretched up high, this is the fillet stretched down and made into a hole, and so on and so on. I'll just undo what I've done there, go back to what I was, go back, 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 um, and then I, so then I printed that out, and um, when I was playing with it, part of this broke off, so I went back to Tinkercad and added some more plastic in here, and some more plastic along the bottom here. Um, then I realized it would be really good if I had a, a shroud all the way around the top of the battery to prevent the negative and positive terminals from um, being exposed. 
So the plan is that the heat shrink will go all around the cells and then can come up and over and um, create a nice cavity for the positive and negative terminals. And I think I might have printed that and then realized that it would be good to have the voltmeter sitting in there. So then back to Tinkercad, played with that. And then finally I got down to the point where I'm starting to just add things for not quite so serious reasons. Um, I added this piece here so that um, so that it's a bit tidier and I added the plus and minus to make it a bit more explicit and slightly harder for me to do something really stupid when I'm plugging all these things together. And that that's the design process uh, done basically. Uh, once you have what you want you export uh, to STL format which is what most home 3D printers work on and save that and uh, then that file gets sent to whatever software your 3D printer came with which will slice it slice this solid object into layers that your 3D printer can print and uh, hopefully it's how you're done so that is my design tool. The beauty of it is that there's no big learning curve. The thing that I was really worried about before buying my 3D printer, I was worried that I might have a printer with really tricky software that was so hard to use that I'd, I'd ended up not really using the printer much. This is dead easy, dead simple and there's a low threshold to actually designing and, and making something with my 3D printer now. So, hope that has been interesting for you. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.